All right. Okay. So another way uh, to perform this cross validation is not instead of tuning the number of parameters, is tuning something called the uh, um, regularization. So the regularization is a technique that achieves a similar effect as to reducing the number of parameters. So a regularization is effectively adding a, the additional term in the optimization. So instead of uh, minimizing over the parameter theta, right, a function that's summing over all the samples, for example, if we are doing a regression, we are taking the outcome of the model xi theta minus yi, let's say the uh, two norms squared as an example, we are minimizing not just the, this objective function, but plus a proportionality constant times uh, the norm of the theta themselves. So uh, let's just, uh, let's just uh, uh, say some general norm. And this norm uh, could be, for example, L1 norm or L2 norm. Uh, or even L0 norm. So, so let's say uh, if the norm of theta is called the L0 norm, uh, it is defined as the number of non-zero entries in theta. This is equivalent of saying, I want a model that has as few non-zero parameters as possible, right? Which means if I have a large lambda, right? If I a large lambda leads to less effective, uh, less uh, non-zero parameters, It is uh, uh, it achieves a very similar effect as just to force the model to have a fewer parameters. Okay, and uh, there are other methods of using uh, using different uh, norms. And the, one of the most popular norms to use is the L1 norm. It's defined as the number of uh, uh, is defined as the sum of uh, let's say k goes from one to the dimension of theta. So let's say uh, m theta k absolute values. It's basically the sum of the absolute values of the individual parameters. This achieves a similar effect as the L0 norm because the uh, if you have a strong enough lambda, if you have a strong enough, uh, it's called the L1 regularization, uh, regularization, right? Uh, you actually get a, a sparse theta. You have a bunch of zeros that are forced to zero uh, because of the regularization. While still it's going to be computationally uh, efficient because the unlike the L0 norm, uh, this norm is actually continuous. And uh, you can show that uh, if the original objective function is convex, the resulting minimization problem is still convex. Uh, of course, you can have the L2 norm. The L2 norm regularization would be just a summation uh, over theta k, uh, sorry, theta k squared. Right, so this L2 regularization uh, is even more computationally attractive because uh, uh, the additional term is not only continuous but also differentiable at all points. Uh, but it doesn't achieve the, it doesn't uh, yield the, the kind of a sparsity that you get from L1 regularization because it doesn't usually force any parameters to go to zero. All right, but essentially uh, you can draw a similar curve uh, with respect to the 
the regularization, but backwards. So, so this is amount of uh, regularization, and this is the uh, cross validation metric. At maximum regularization, right? When the regularization term completely dominates, the entire focus is going to be on minimizing the norm of the parameters. Your data doesn't really matter. At this point, uh, you are essentially getting the same quality as having a zero parameters. So this is going to be the most underfit case. So uh, let's say the CV metric starts over here when you have infinite regularization, right? And then it, uh, uh, the cross validation metric is going to increase. And when you have zero uh, regularization, it's essentially you have no regularization. And uh, unless the number of parameters is small enough that you uh, otherwise you're going to have a, a decrease in the CV metric. So, so again, uh, you have two cases of, of overfit and underfit, but uh, the direction is opposite. Instead of uh, having overfit on the right, you have underfit on the right. You have too much regularization. And on the left, you have overfit because you have too little regularization. Right, so, so basically, uh, again, the, you use the cross-validation procedure to figure out uh, how much regularization you should use instead of how many parameters you can use. Right. This is uh, this is quite convenient because uh, you don't have to change your model as in the previous case. You can have the same model but apply different strengths of regularization on the parameters to uh, achieve the effect of uh, uh, models with different degrees of freedoms. You use the cross validation to figure out what is the best uh, uh, regularization uh, strength to use lambda. So lambda is going to be the parameter you figure out during the uh, cross validation procedure, and then you go to out of sample to evaluate just for once.